Hello YouTubers, welcome to the vlog here, I'm Rob McCready, at your service. We're going to talk about two things today, we're going to talk about traction control system on the Corvette, the traction control system and the Stabila track system. First thing I want to talk about is TCS, traction control system. That is exactly what they say it is. Um, it controls the traction on the rear wheels of your tire and traction control means that first of all traction control defaults which means when you start up the car every time you start up the car traction control is on every time you start up the car so you start up the car and you go out and you try to burn rubber and the next thing you know the uh, traction control system senses that the wheels are spinning too much and applies brake to the spinning wheels and reduces engine power to eliminate wheel spin. Well, that's a good thing, I guess. Uh, can you shut it off? Yes, you can. Why would you shut it off? E excluding burnouts, why would you shut off, jump in your car and shut off the uh, traction control system? It's a five second quiz, if you can tell me. Got to shout loud so I can hear you. <laughs> The reason you would want to shut it off is, let's say you get stuck in snow or mud or ice or something like that, and you needed to rock the car back and forth, spin the tires. Um, if traction control is on, which it defaults on, if traction control is on, then you are not going to be able to probably get out of that snow that you're in if you're up north. Fortunately, I'm down here in Florida. I have not seen any snow. It's been cold a couple of nights, but no snow yet, and it's nice now, it's back in the 70s. So anyway, that's traction control. It controls, they call it the TCS, the traction control system, and it controls your rear wheels, and it causes your wheels not to spin. These tires on these cars are pretty expensive. Only guys with lots of money go out and do burnouts, because I guess, I guess they can afford uh, what, six, seven, eight, a thousand dollars a tire? I don't know. But anyway, that's traction control. Now, Stabila Track is very interesting. Uh, it, where it, it defaults to on also. So when you turn on the car, you have your traction control and you have your Stabila Track. Now, what exactly is Stabila Track? Well, Stabila Track tries to think of the word stabila track it tries to keep your car on stabilized while it's on track this is a good way to remember it stabila track stabilize your car uh, and keep you uh, tracking in the um, direction you want to go so that is stabila track how does it work well it's kind of interesting how it works it um, first of all I got to talk about two things understeer and oversteer. Now in racing or even outside of racing, um, sometimes the car will understeer or oversteer depending on how fast you're going, maybe you're spinning the rear tires. Well, let's, let's talk about um, oversteer first of all. Oversteer. Now think about, think of this when you think of oversteer. Oversteer means the car is oversteering. Think of it that way. It's rot rotating faster than you want it to rotate, okay? Because the rear wheels have lost traction. So um, this is called oversteer. Stabila track, the system will see the direction you've got the car steered and find that the car is rotating faster and going around more than you want it to go because you're trying to steer over there and the car wants to go over here. So this oversteering situation, what, think about it now, oversteering, it's almost like you're oversteering the car, but it isn't, you've lost traction in the rear tires. And you are oversteering. So what happens is with the Stabila track system, you ready for this? The Stabila track system, if, if we're going to right hand corner here, it'll touch the left hand front tire, touch the brake on it, because the, the traction's gone on the rear tires, but there is some traction left probably in the front tires. So it'll touch this left front tire, and when it touches this left front tire, it will bring the car 
back to the direction you're trying to go. In other words, you're coming around, it's that sliding like this, and hits the brake here, and all of a sudden, boom, you're going in the direction you're trying to steer. So that is oversteer, and that's how Stabilitrack works on oversteer. All right, let's take the other one, understeer. Understeer means that you're going around a corner, and the front wheels basically lose traction, and the car wants to go straight like that. You're trying to make it come around like that, but the car wants to go like that because there's no tra traction on the front wheels. Now, if that happens, then the car, the Stabilitrack system knows that there is some traction back here, and it's going to, it's going to take this uh, right, left, uh, right rear tire and uh, touch the brake here. So when it takes the right rear tire and touches the brake here, then the car is going to rotate around instead of going straight like that. Oh, I got company. Hi, how are you? You come to watch? My little pal Coco here. So instead of going straight like that, touches the brake, the car rotates around like this and goes in the direction you want to go. That is um, understeer, and that's how it's corrected by the Stabila track system. So now we've talked about um, traction control and stability track. Now let's see, why would you want to shut these off? Why, why would you, because, because this is another system. And the next thing we're going to talk about is a system. We're going to go in and shut both of these off. We're going to shut the traction control off and the stability track off, but we're going to go into another system that you would use if, let's say, you were doing an autocross or you were doing a track time. Um, and then you want to know about this. So let's go out in the car and I'll show you what that's all about. Let's go outside and look at performance traction management. That's what we're going to do. After going through this drill, this is what we want to do. And we'll do this now. And it's a beautiful day here in Florida today. Overcast, about 70-something. And my favorite little uh, sign here that I have in the garage. like to do a want-to-go-fast event and get that time. That would be nice. All right. Oh, the motorcycle's dying to go out today, too. It keeps looking at me like, why? Why don't you take me for a ride? I might have to. We'll get through this video. I might go for a little ride. Who knows? All right. Let's get to the business at hand here, because this will be fun. By the way, the stuff we're talking about today is, it's strongly suggested, and I would suggest it too, that to use this stuff that we're talking about today, that it be used on a track. The manual says that it's not for use uh, in street, on the street, but rather in a closed circuit track. And by putting it into this mode, if you were going autocrossing, I would use it there too. If you were new, especially, maybe even you're not new and you want to see what you can do, can you beat the computer? Put everything, put this on, run a few times, and then turn it all off, turn all the nannies off, and see if you could beat the computer. It's kind of fun to do that. I did that for several years, and uh, Took me a while before I could beat the computer, but I finally did. But it isn't easy. <laughs> the computer's pretty damn good. All right, let me start the car. So, in order to get into, well, let me just tell you a little bit about performance traction management. Performance traction management uh, will PTM, they call it. It integrates traction control. Stabila track and your magnetic ride control system to provide uh, improved and constant performance while cornering. So the big thing is in cornering. So what it allows you to do is you go into a corner instead of just slowly putting on the gas, keeping the grip just where you want it, don't overdo it so the car does, the rear wheels don't break loose. You have to kind of massage the gas pedal. With performance traction management, you go into the corner, finish off your braking, when you go to the gas, you nail it. You put it right to the floor. And the system 
will get you out at optimum speed without spinning the car, doing anything else. This is great. I wish I had this when I was autocross. This system is unbelievable, and uh, I'm, go I'm gonna put down below, there's a performance traction man management demonstration by, I think it's Tommy Milner from the Corvette Racing Team, and he tries all the different modes, and, uh, and you'll see if he can beat the computer or not. Is he fast? as the computer, slower than, faster than the computer, slower than the computer. It's kind of interesting watching. It was done five years ago, I think, for the ZR1, but it's the same, basically the same uh, performance traction management system that we have here in the 2017 Z06. So the big deal, of course, is to go over here, and let me put my camera down here, and there's a little button down here, and I'm going to hit this button twice. So I'll go back up here and show you what I'm doing. So I'm up here, and I'm going to hit the button twice, like I did earlier. I did it earlier. Showed you once. That's the traction control system is off. Hit it a second. Oh, it wasn't fast enough. You know why it's not doing it? Because good. This is a good lesson. I'm in touring mode. I have to be. Let's see if it happens in sports mode. Yes, I can turn it both off in sports mode. Okay, but. You don't have the advantage of performance traction management. I can't, I can't get into those five modes. So this is, to me, is useless to me. So I'm gonna go over to track mode and watch what happens. I have performance traction management and I have my different selections here. Wet, dry, sport one, sport two, and race. Just like you're gonna see in the video if you go and look at this video afterwards. Now let me go back to the beginning. In wet mode, performance traction management, they call it PTM, active handling is on. In dry mode, active handling is on. In sport one mode, active handling is on. In sport two mode, active handling is off. And in race mode, active handling is off. So those are the five modes you can put it in. All of the five modes will, you know, the lower one should be slower than the faster one. So you should, you should be able to uh, um, go faster as you go up through the modes. But watch this video I'm going to put a link to down below and you'll see exactly what's going on. So how do we get out of this thing? Go to that center button again, hit it once, and we're back to normal driving. Okay? You could be driving along, you could be driving along the road on the highway and hit the button twice and you could shut everything off and then you could pick what you wanted here to go racing with I like the sport 2 seems to be the best one for me and not only that now that we're already here we can also do launch control it's all set up for launch control too we're in performance traction management but right now I can hold my foot on the brake, put my gas all the way to the floor, go up to about 1900 RPMs and launch this son of a gun and it will really take off. So that's, that's one of the advantages. Uh, you can use launch control right from here. So what, what I was thinking of is I probably should have done launch control after I did this, but I've already done a launch control video. In fact, I've done two of them. So this kind of leads you up into where launch control is. I think because you, this will give you a better understanding of the whole system. And uh, if you want to go on track, uh, I would, I would definitely uh, use this. And I think if I, my first day on track, I wouldn't put it in wet. I'd put it in dry, where the active handling is still on. And then um, I would go on from there. And you got to remember now, by using PTM performance traction management, you you've got traction control, stability track, and your magnetic ride control system all working together for you. This is a pretty nice, pretty nice deal. So I would highly recommend using this, uh, whether you could do a track day or you're doing an autocross day, try it out, try it out. And then go back, shut, you know, go back, uh, go into sport mode or something like that and shut both of these off and then see if you can beat your times. Be kind of interesting. I think most of you won't, but anyway. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you had uh, got some interest out of it. 
and some learn something from it. That's the whole idea. I'm trying to pass some of the knowledge I know or have learned onto you folks. And if you know something that I left out, put it down below because we're always, this is an exchange of ideas um, where we all benefit by anything you might know that I missed. And uh, if you want to see something different on the uh, on the video, something you'd like me to do, uh, mention it down below. And if I can do it, I will. If uh, This one was mentioned to me earlier by a couple of people locally, so that's why I'm doing it. Uh, but I was going to do it anyway. But they, they, they spacked my, uh, you know, my initiative to get going and doing this. So anyway, need subscribers. If you haven't done it, please subscribe. That really helps. I need to get to a thousand in three weeks. I don't think I'm going to make it, but maybe with the help of you men and women out there, I could get to a thousand. I don't know. Uh, but I need to get to a thousand. Everything else is okay, but I need to get to a thousand. Uh, so if you can at all uh, see to hitting the subscribe button, I would really appreciate it. Hit the like button if you like the video. Have a great day. Have fun with your Corvette. Go out and drive it. And we're going to Daytona. 24-hour race uh, the end of this week. So we'll be down there. I'll shoot some videos down there and uh, bring those back to you too. Give you a little impressions of what's going on at Daytona. Thanks again. Enjoy your Corvette.